Hi there everybody, this is David and welcome to New RPG News. We have a ton of stuff to talk about today. From a potential Unicorn Overlord 2, to some great visions of mana news, to a lost RPG series from the 90s making a return, to some rumors that have now been pretty much confirmed for the upcoming Persona 6. But first, before we do get to all those great news stories, let's have a word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Anomaly Collapse, which just released the other day and you can check it out right now through the Steam links in the video description. Here, you'll be thrust into a supernatural sci-fi universe where every step in its innovative 1D battlefield requires strategic planning and execution. You'll be commanding a unique trio of furry warriors and sharpening your tactical prowess as you face off against monstrous anomalies in fun, turn-based battles. You're going to have to be sure to harness the synergy of specific class skills, use precise positioning, and a vast inventory of items to defeat the enemies and unravel the intricate mysteries of the universe. In addition, the creators of Anomaly Collapse are giving away exclusive Steam keys to the full game, an opportunity that you do not want to miss. And if you're as excited about this game as I am, simply head on over to the Anomaly Collapse Twitter page to join in the excitement and stand a chance to play the game for free. You'll find the link to their Twitter page in the video description below too. And now with that, let's get on back to the news. Thank you so much for that, and now let's get to all the news that's fit to print. First up with our top story, Atlas may already have a Unicorn Overlord sequel in mind. Yeah, this was a smashing, smashing success, and for good reason. Everybody loves this game, including me. So it says here, according to the players of the Unicorn Overlord over in Asia, they were asked to answer questions from the customer survey for the Asian region by Atlas. And one of the very last questions was, do you plan on purchasing any sequels to Unicorn Overlord if they were to be made? The users could choose from the range of very likely to very unlikely. But the thing is, like, you could be jumping to conclusions here or whatever, but why would they ask you this question if they weren't going to be creating a sequel or at least contemplating a sequel, thinking about a sequel, kind of gauging interest in a sequel? That's what these companies do. So if enough people are like, yeah, of course, duh, I'm totally going to buy this, then they're like, okay, great, we'll make a sequel. So it looks like Atlas has seen the light, they see how well this game is doing, and now they want to capitalize on that, and Vanillaware is going to be making a sequel to this, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. And speaking of Unicorn Overlord, I figured that I would show y'all this dealio that we have over here on Amazon. Um, it looks like you can get Unicorn Overlord for 33% off. It's originally $60. It is now selling for $40 over on Amazon. I will include a link uh, to purchase this down in the video comments as well. Um, it looks here, whenever I click on the Nintendo Switch, it doesn't give me like a price. So I think that that one's sold out. And if I click on Xbox, it still says $60. But if I click on PlayStation 5, that's going to be the $40 version right there. As far as the collector's editions are concerned, it doesn't look like those are on sale, unfortunately. It's just the standard edition, and it's just for PS5 since Switch already sold out. But again, I just wanted to make you aware of this sale. Speaking of sales, there is a sale for Smile For Me, the collector's edition, originally $80, now $60 with an additional 20% off if you use the code SMILE20 um, for this. And this is kind of a strange bird of an RPG. I'm going to go ahead and read the about. It says, a heartbroken clown, wayward souls, and a juicy mechanical lips. As the big event draws near, help the troubled residents of the habitat and demask the mysterious Dr. Habit before it's too late. Smile For Me is an unconventional point-and-click adventure game that puts you at the center of an abstract world. Nod and shake your head to chat with new friends and solve their mysteries to cheer them up. The people are bizarre, the puzzles are whack, and the world hides a sinister secret. Yeah, it's kind of, like I said, an odd bird, but at least that they are aware of how odd it is. But I did want to make you aware of this sale and show you what comes with this collector's edition, because it's a lot. Physical copy of the game. 24 Habitation trading cards? Four acrylic standees, double-sided acrylic charm, happiness, facts, desk, calendar, microfiber, cloth, lenticular art card, 13 sticker sheet, two inked stamps, 19 window cling stickers, or I'm sorry, nine, a soundtrack downloadable card, and a collector's edition box. And it says the Switch version is currently being restocked, so there is a delay for that version. But, like, look at this. Like, this is what you get. Like, it's a lot. It's a freaking lot. You know, a lot of the times you'll look at these other collector's editions and it's like you get like a statuette and you get like a soundtrack and maybe like a postcard and it's like 
$150. And this is a third of the price, and you get like a million things. Look at this. This is crazy town. So I think that this is just a great... Um, uh, a great deal. And again, it's on sale and you can use the code SMILE20 for an additional 20% off. And I'll also put that down in the uh, pinned comment video description as well for y'all. All I can say is what the kids say. Based. Visions of Mana producer refuses to change series identity for Western audiences. It is best to deliver the game based upon the developer's creative vision. Hell freaking yeah! Uh, Square Enix's Mana series producer has declared that rather than bringing in new fans by changing the action RPG line's core identity, he hopes to do so by celebrating those elements which have made it popular in Japan or for a long time. So he doesn't want to change things around to appeal to the Western audiences. He wants to keep it the same way it's always been. Oh my god, I could kiss this guy's feet. He says, at one point he was pressed by the outlet as to whether or not he had seen the difference in reactions to the announcements of the series' next entry between the Japanese and the overseas players. He then goes on to say, In Japan, there are many people who have been playing the series for a long time and are familiar with the IP's history. So the reaction has been half expectant and half anxious, the producer told the outlet. On the contrary, overseas players showed a lot of curiosity about the game and what it entails, including if it would be available on the platforms that they own. The difference between the reactions is somewhat interesting. He then went on and he was asked if he had any plans on how you'd like the Mana series to reach out to the Western gamers of the future. He goes on to say, I get the feeling that many people who picked up Secret of Mana at the time that it came out were young, like I was, because I regularly received feedback from people who played the latest entries through the lens of their childhood experiences with the series. I do hope that as they grow older and they become parents themselves, they will recommend the Mana series to their children and tell them about how fun it is. The unique atmosphere and design might make some people feel that it's a bit childish, but he added, those are the strengths, yes they are, those are the strengths of the Mana series. Rather than changing these features that make the Mana series what it is, I hope that new players will come to like these games that have been popular in Japan for a long time now for what they are. I think that the visuals of the Mana games are a distinctive characteristic, therefore it is best to deliver the game based upon the developer's creative vision. For example, there are many different types of characters in the Mana series. I think that the fun of the game is encountering this mysterious world and its inhabitants, and because of that, we don't have to have a strong focus on a particular audience. However, we do work on the game while bearing in mind that the Mana series is loved by fans from all over the world. Oh my gosh, I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay, so imagine this. Imagine this, that let's just say, for example, that they did want to change this series around to appeal to a Western audience like, you know, some other RPG series that we all know what I'm talking about. And then they did. And then people might like that Mana series, but then they would grow up and they would recommend that to their kids, but it would still be Western. And it would like, we'd never go back to like this Japanese aesthetic, this beautiful, beautiful aesthetic, this beautiful artwork that we grew up with. It would just be lost forever in this just in this unattainable search for this mythical Western audience. Like, they, they know what they want, they have their idea in mind, and they are sticking to their guns, and I applaud them for it. Same guy, same game, different interview. Now the Visions of Mana producer is commenting on a lack of a Switch version. This is an interview with RPG Site, and he was asked to say, why isn't it releasing on the Nintendo Switch? His answer. That's definitely a tricky question to give a direct answer to. For Trials of Mana, the main thing was how we had to consider the future of the series and how to cultivate a player base for the future entries of the franchise. When we thought about the next, say, 10 or so years of the series' future, we felt that it was paramount to really solidify what we wanted Mana to be going forward. Some of those core tenets included a focus on expansive environments and a richer experience overall. As a direct result, that's what informed the hardware that we decided to develop for. That's all I can say specifically at this moment. Then they go on to say, well, it looks like we won't be getting Visions of Mana on the Switch. Perhaps it could end up on the Switch's successor. Time will tell if that happens in the end. I have heard rumors, unsubstantiated rumors, that this will be a Switch 2 launch title. So, um, so yeah, do keep that in mind. But basically, the guy is saying, like, the Switch isn't powerful enough for this game. So we don't want to, like, downgrade it to the Switch. Um, so yeah, that's, he's trying to say that in the nicest words possible here. This is really neat. We had like an indie showcase 
Um, just the other day where they announced like a whole bunch of different indie RPGs or game, well, games, I should say, but I went through the whole list and I cultivated like all the RPGs and stuff that interests me. And that's what we're going to be going through now. This is an airship open world survival RPG called Echoes of Elysium announced for the PC. It says, survive the ancient clock world world clockwork world of Elysium in this airship survival RPG set in the heavens above ancient mythical Greece. Band together and embark on an enchanting odyssey through Elysium shadow landscape. Choose your hero and grow in power while you design a f and build a fleet of majestic clockwork airships. Soar to forgotten lands and uncover the secrets buried deep in the heart of Elysium. Embrace the sky, defy the odds, and let the winds of adventure propel you towards triumph in this unforgettable open world survival RPG. It even says that you can like fight in the sky. It says design, build, upgrade, and live on your airships. Harvest, gather, fight, and survive in the skies of Elysium. Reminds me of Skies of Arcadia, Clockwork World. That's like steampunk stuff, Final Fantasy VI, that sort of stuff. Like, this looks really freaking cool. I am very, very, very hopeful for this game right here. JRPG inspired turn based fantasy RPG Runa has been announced for PC with a Kickstarter campaign to launch on April 16th. This thing looks absolutely beauteous. It says, Runa is an adventure game inspired by modern classic JRPGs with a turn-based battle system, social links, and a story-rich science fantasy world. Promising to keep intact what makes classic JRPG games fun, hey! Runa also features elemental puzzles and base building, as well as minigames like farming, fishing, and cooking. It's set in a world in which Runa symbolized the technological advancements of an ancient civilization. Whether for domestic use or combat, the use of Runas is key. Only some people, known as adepts, are able to fully control them and unleash their true powers. Huh, maybe like Golden Sun or something. Like, you can look at some of these pictures. Like, look at these pictures. They're absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that. I saw this and I'm just like, this is... Uh, oh, look, look at the combat thing. That combat thing that is screaming metaphor, uh, persona, SMT, just the way that it's all set up and everything. It looks absolutely so freaking cool. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Um, don't really talk a lot about Kickstarters. I could talk. So, I am I am I I am approached about Kickstarters all the time, and I turn people away all the time about Kickstarters. Um, so whenever I say I don't really talk a lot about them, I know that I do, but I really don't because I could talk a lot about more. But this is definitely one that I am going to be talking about whenever um it does launch because it looks so freaking cool. There is a Tenshi no Uda revival project. If you guys don't know about this game series, you may be in good company. This originally came out in the early 90s. Um, I want to say like 1990 through about 94, somewhere in that window. Um, there was three games in the series. They started over on the PC engine. Oh, it says right here, 1991. Uh, on the PC engine, and then it merged over towards the SNES. All of them stayed in Japan, though. Um... But there have been translation patches, um, at least for the SNES games as well. I think that's translated under the name Artha. I'm pretty sure it's Artha. Anyway, it says that they have launched a teaser website for their new revival project, which features artwork from characters from this series. We don't know exactly what this means, but we do know that there is a revival of this series underway. Hopefully, maybe it is a fourth game in the series, or maybe it's a collection of the games together. Hopefully, they'll release it in America this time in English, and hopefully it's not a mobile game either, so... <laughs> <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. The wildly popular Cat Quest series is getting a third game. And this is an open world uh, action RPG as well. It says, get whiskered away in a hearty cat venture in Cat Quest Pirates of the Purr Abian. Yeah, the latest installment in the world an award-winning Cat Quest series. Plays a swashbuckling pervateer in this 2.5D open world action RPG set in a fantastical pirate themed world, the Purabian. An archipelago swarming with pirates so <laughs> searching for the northern star, a long lost mythical treasure. Alongside your trusty spirit companion, set sail through the Purabian in your very own ship, but beware, the seas are dangerous. And a meow tiny is nigh as the hordes of pirates under the order of Pirate King hunt you down. A lot of people have said such great things of the Cat Quest series, so I know that a lot of people are looking forward to this, and it looks cute as a button. 
We have a teaser trailer for Dino Lords, due at an early access in 2025. This is a real-time strategy uh, game, and it is odd. Dino Lords takes place in an alternate history in which the King of Denmark launches the first dinosaur-powered conflict with his invasion of England. Players will take on the role of an English lord defending their land against the ferocious invaders and taming their own primeval beasts for battle. Mixing real-time real -time strategy with action RPG gameplay, Dino Lords will see players gathering resources, building a city, constructing fortifications, and commanding units in a shocking new age of medieval warfare. So, yeah, I saw this, and I'm like, okay, you know, real-time strategy game, I can get behind that. And then I was like, really? The Danish king using dinosaurs? And you're an English lord, but it's medieval, but it's dinosaurs? And I'm just like, what a strange concept. But sometimes the strangest things are the best things. Another real-time strategy RPG, this one's set during World War II, it's called 63 Days. It's announced for the PS5, Xbox, PS4, and PC, due out sometime in 2024. Right now, there is a closed beta test version available, and it says an open expanded public demo will also be available in just a couple of weeks if you do want to look further into this. Here's the about. I... I, me, I'm part of a first generation born to free Poland after 123 years of foreign occupation. The outbreak of World War II stripped me of my family, home, and future. We're angry, tired, but united. We're itching to do something to regain some measure of control over our lives. My companions and I feel like we only have one choice, to get revenge and win back independence for our city and our nation or die trying. The odds are overwhelmingly against us. We're like brothers and sisters, emboldened by our fighting spirit, relying on our wits, stealth, and teamwork. But... Will it be enough? 63 Days is about brotherhood and the fight to regain independence against overwhelming odds in the 1944 occupied Warsaw, Poland. Despite its setting, it's a universal story, showcasing the human cost of war from the standpoint of regular people whose lives got uprooted with the outbreak of the war. It's an isometric, real-time tactical game that follows the footsteps of destructive creations previous to release War Mongrels, building upon its gameplay mechanics. I am a history buff. I've said this before. My degree was in history. I was a history teacher, for God's sakes. Like, I love anything historical, so this is right up my alley. Now, from dark, gritty dinosaurs in World War II, we have a medieval kingdom simulation game that looks super freaking cute, launching early access on May 16th. Uh, it says right here, it's uh, PC. Okay, New Orleans is a medieval kingdom sim inspired by RimWorld and Crusader Kings that generates complex stories. Manage a noble family that owns a city populated by dozens of characters from different classes, from aristocrats to peasants, soldiers to criminals. Each citizen has their own needs and complex behaviors, which will depend on their social status and individual traits. And often, their behavior can be deadly to your family. The game generates complex stories on a new level through unpredictable interactions in a large society made up of numerous unique individuals. Things like their social stratification, crime, riots, religious controversies, and struggle for the throne can all play a part in the story. They all have their own relationships, their sex drives, beliefs, health systems, and backgrounds. Family members also have unique personality traits, and family traits can be passed on down to their children. This looks like um, a pretty deep simulation game that looks pretty neat and I wanted to bring this one up too. I have heard great things about Slay the Spire and now we're getting a sequel to it due at an early access in 2025 for the PC. Uh, this is a roguelike deck builder sort of RPG and it says civilization has had 1,000 years for the Spire to reopen its doors. Return to the Spire and faced friends and foes in the sequel to the quintessential roguelike deck builder. How high will you ascend, and what truths lie at the top? New slayers join the fray with their own sets of cards, mechanics, and personalities. Try out more archetypes and master them at your own pace. The Spire forever awaits those who dare to challenge it. But the Spire is not what it used to be. Encounter all new enemies, events, and treasures await as the rooms and items that you discover change every time that you play. So it's one of those random dungeon sort of things. Try risky builds or play it safe as you explore countless different strategies, Find yourself in peculiar scenarios and confront the bus bosses, the bosses, the bosses, <laughs> the boosies of each act. Uh, Slay the Spire 2 is completely rewritten, I can't believe I said that, from the ground up in a new game engine. We're bringing in modern features, incorporating all new visuals, and expanding mod ability as well. Now, moving over from some action and tactical and turn-based sort of genres, we're going into some more farming and life sim and cozy stuff with Sunnyside launching on May 24th, my 42nd birthday for PC and July 10th for PS5 and Xbox. 
wish me a happy birthday. Thank you. The physical edition will be available for PlayStation 5, and a demo is available right now for the PC. It says... After a thousand-year-old sassy survey drone named Sparky rescues you from a cave-in, you are tasked with helping this new companion retrieve their lost memories and complete the last mission that they remember, which is to learn more about humans. So, you've purchased your first plot of land in an aging post-town in the heart of the Japanese countryside. Now it's up to you to create a homestead that you can be proud of. Use modern technology to balance time between your new farm life and join the local community. Meet new people and learn about their lives, support their businesses, hang out around town and in the city, and even pursue some romance. With a focus on individuality, you'll be provided with a unique opportunity that allows for creative freedom and self-expression. Your avatar, your homestead, and even your in-game cell phone can all be tailored to your preferences and desires. Place your home and customize your farm layout however that you want. There are plenty of decorations, clothing styles, and hair options to enjoy on your journey of self-discovery. The best part of living in the country is becoming part of the community, though. Enjoy hanging out with the local residents, listen to their stories, witness their lives, form bonds, attend events, and build a life that you can be proud of. Now instead of a castle sim or a farmstead sim, now it's a school sim with Let's School. Coming to the PS5, Xbox, PS4, and Switch this summer. The PC version is going to be updated. It's already out and available. And they also announced downloadable content for the PC version as well this launched last year in july for the pc but they are going to be receiving new content on april 11th with the free update called riverside haven and paid downloadable content uh, a watertown's furniture pack i can't imagine paying money for furniture but whatever in let school players build and run their own high schools acting as the sole school principal head teacher where they have the power to erect buildings craft curriculums in a range of different subjects hire and fire teachers Customize everything from school decorations to student uniforms, create and manage after-school clubs, and lots, lots more. All this freedom empowers players to guide students from potential mediocrity to academic superstardom across multiple scenarios and a sandbox mode. I kind of, like, the more I read about this, like, I used to play school with my friends all the time, you know? Um, I want to be a teacher when I grow up, and I would play school and all that. Like, this would have been right up my alley whenever I was a kid. If they had games like this whenever I was a kid, I totally would have played something like this, but... They didn't! And I played Chrono Trigger and Lufia 2 and Secret of Mana and stuff like that instead. And I had a good time either way. Lasara's Summit Kingdom is now available in Early Access. It is available at a 20% of launch discount of $15.99 until April 24th, after which it'll cost 20 bucks. This is a challenging city builder which tasks you with creating a new home for your people forced out of the lowlands. During a campaign or a sandbox playthrough, you will establish multiple towns, each on a unique mountain with its own traits. All your towns coexist in symbiosis, creating a trading network, which you can then adjust to your needs by revisiting already developed settlements. The Kingdom of Lysara has to be rebuilt. Then it goes on to note, it says this is purely a city building experience, focused solely on the economy, resource management, and survival, despite the inhospitable environment. Therefore, the game does not feature any combat or any other kind of military aspects. I am glad that they noted that because you don't want to buy a game under false pretenses. So I think that it's really smart that the developers are like, hey, you know, you might think that there might be combat in here, but there ain't. This is all economy. This is all city building and stuff like that. So if this looks up your alley, be sure to check this one out. And the last indie RPG that went through this indie world showcase thing that was like, I think it was like an hour long, we have Gestalt, Steam and Cinder, which is launching for the PC on May 21st. A release date for the console versions, though, has not yet been announced. It didn't even, I don't even think that it says which consoles it's going to be on. Anyway, it says it's inspired by 16 and 32-bit classics. It uses tight 2D platforming and exhilarating combat with engrossing, twist-leading narratives and a stunningly handcrafted steampunk world. Join Alethia and a vibrant cast of characters as they race to discover the secrets of Steam City of Can Canaan, clobber enemies of clockwork golems, and hunt horrors that slither through the depths once forgotten. Thwart the twisted schemes of Canaan's corrupt overseers, the nefarious Comidium? Fight for mankind's survival and reveal the dark and dangerous truths riveted in the very foundations of Steam City. I want to see if it says anything about what... No, it just it doesn't say anything about which consoles it's going to be released on. It just says that there are going to be consoles, but it doesn't say which consoles. So do keep an eye out on that. And in our final story of the day, Persona 6's main color might have leaked. 
We might already know what the main color scheme for Persona 6 is, and it could confirm a fan theory. According to Midori, who we've heard of before, who has a 100% track record, not 99.9, 100% correct track record. The main color for Persona 6 is green. They took to so social media to share that Persona 6 reportedly started development in 2019, along with Persona 3 Reload and Persona 5 Tactica. So it's already in development and it's been in development for five years now. During Persona... During Persona's 25th anniversary, Sega released new artwork to commemorate the occasion. I remember talking about this back whenever this happened. And there was a particular one that, that depicted all the protagonists across the entire series standing against the wall of graffiti. On the ground next to the Persona 5 protagonist was a bucket of green paint, which has fans speculating that could be the main color of Persona 6. Midori claims that the exact shade of green in the paint bucket is the same one being used for Persona 6, seemingly confirming that fan theory. They literally just said, the color theme for Persona 6 is green. That was it. So, <laughs> I like that. There it is. Boom! There it is. There it is. So, like, that, what, does that, what does that tell you? To me, green is nature, life, rebirth, renewal. Maybe getting out of the city. Maybe going somewhere else. You know, Yakuza, like a dragon, that went to Hawaii. Maybe they'll go somewhere else. Maybe they'll go to Hawaii this time. Maybe they'll go to, like, Brazil. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But it is green. It is nature. It is life. It is rebirth. It is renewal. So tell me in the comments what y'all think about that. And I have a super special video for y'all tomorrow. It is a 40 plus minute video um, going over. It's a collaboration video. And I've invited a ton of people to come and join me and go over some hidden gems and under the radar RPGs. So be sure that you... Um, Set aside some time in your calendar for that one, because it is quite a doozy. And that's it for today's news. Hope that you all enjoyed this, and as always, have a good day.